got we got Janiah Iqbal and we got Monty Clark. Uh, we are going to be really hitting on today, talking about how to get yourself out of that rut in these challenging times of hiring, uh, and, and really diving down your your social media, what you're doing there, your resume, how you can make it stand apart from the crowd. And then we will talk a little bit about uh, what you should be doing in building connections uh, you know, as you apply for jobs and take that route. So um, I will give these guys a minute to introduce themselves. We'll start off with Adam. Adam, tell us who you are, what you do. Awesome. Adam, thank you so much for having me on today. Appreciate it. Adam Posner, I am the founder and managing director of NHP Talent Group. We're a boutique staffing firm located here in New York, uh, focusing on all things digital marketing, advertising, and media. So I work with brands, startups, and agencies. Uh, I do a lot more than just recruiting. It's TA process, uh, internal systems, ATS systems, uh, interview techniques with in-house companies and brands, all that kind of fun stuff. And, you know, as far as coaching goes, you know, I, I coach my candidates. I don't do it as a side hustle or a full-time job. But listen, I've been in and out of the industry for a very long time on the on the candidate side as well. And hopefully I can bring that <coughs> angle and expertise to everyone today. Awesome. Janayad? Hey, my name is Janayad Iqbal. I help people without college degrees find meaningful jobs that pay well. I'm the founder of NoDegree.com and the host of the No Degree podcast, where I interview those without college degrees and have them share their stories. So I do help people with resumes and interview prep just because uh, it's one of the things that I sort of naturally fell into in my line of work. And it's something uh, I'm doing a lot of right now with a lot of people getting laid off. Yeah. And if you're up late night, definitely hit up Janiyah's uh, sleep insomnia. He does not sleep, uh, but uh, they're always a good time. So Monty, tell us about who you are, what you're doing. Hey, Adam, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Um, it's Monty Clark, and um, I have a company called Relevant Marketing Solutions. Um, I focus primarily on LinkedIn marketing and uh, wrote a book called Mastering LinkedIn and have a, a master class that I run where I, I take small groups of five and show them how to build a business using LinkedIn. And um, also work with some people that are seeking, you know, jobs and and how to go about doing that using the platform as well. Yeah, so awesome. Uh, like I said, these guys bring just great amounts of information and talent to the screen to us today um, yeah, in, in all the areas that are, I think are really important as you are getting yourself out there in that job hunt. So let's uh, let's start off, let's start talking about social media, right? Because I, I think, you know, especially right now, everybody is on it. I was reading uh, reading the other day that like uh, Facebook has actually seen like a 40% increase in traffic in the last couple of weeks with, with everything going on. So um, let's talk about social profiles. Uh, what, what stands out? What makes a good social profile? Uh, and, and what are those big no-nos that you shouldn't do on your profile? Monty, I guess, start uh, us out. Okay, Monty, go. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to have you. You got, you got a point. <laughs> so it, at least on the LinkedIn profiles, um, you know, I would say fill them out, um, make them all complete. Um, don't, don't use a picture of your dog or your family. Um, as your profile picture. Um, actually, have a good profile photo. Don't forget about the space behind you that's your header image. Um, use that for purpose. And um, if, you have a, if you have a particular job or that you're pursuing or within a particular industry, um, use that space to promote that. And the soft skills, you know, I would, I would particularly promote within that space and what you bring to the table to a company. Um, you know, you got to remember that when you're looking for a job, most job have most jobs that are posted on LinkedIn or, or any other platform, you know, have tens of thousands of people that are, you know, either looking at those jobs or applying for those jobs. So you got to figure out how you're going to separate yourself people that uh, are already, up, you know, <laughs> put in their resumes and stuff, right? So strategically think through, and, and one of the things that I that I tell people is you got to go investigate the company, got to, that you're, that has posted the job, look for the particular keywords that they highlight, um, 
from the detailed job description that they post and make sure that those are included in your profile. Um, the best way to do that is in the about section. Um, I also tell people don't use your personal profile as a duplicate of your resume. Um, make sure that it's all correct. You know, they will go back and forth and look at um, both your resume and your LinkedIn profile. The information has to um, correlate. They have to be this, you know, the same in terms of you worked here at this time and your resume says you worked here at this time. So yep. that all has to be correct. But you can put so much more into these LinkedIn profiles that's going to give a um, person that is recruiting or an HR person a lot more insight into why they should choose you over the 10,000 other people that are in that. And with that, I'll just go to these other guys and let them pour into it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Monty pretty much said everything. You know, the, the, the real key thing. Yeah, but I, I think you know, and I'm speaking from the recruiter standpoint here, and I'll give everyone a pull back the curtain. We do compare, and you hit you hit the nail on the head. We do compare your resume to your LinkedIn profile as far as accuracy, and pretty much, you know, we get, there's a little bit of wiggle room there too because we understand a couple things. One. Not everybody's as active on LinkedIn as everybody else, right? So sometimes you may not be updating your jobs, but if you are in the job search, yes, you have to update your LinkedIn to make sure chronologically that it matches up. Because we look at that and we look at discrepancies and I've called people out on that. And some people will say, hey man, like I just haven't been on LinkedIn. And then sometimes you might, and I'm not trying to sound cynical here, but you may catch somebody kind of in a, you know, I was here, I left there. And you really want to get the real story yeah. from that. Um, I, I like the idea in, in your LinkedIn profile to call out actionable results. Same thing in a resume mm -hmm. too, right? Let's talk about action. Not just that like, you know, I did this, but I did this and achieved these results. And I think that's really what's going to make you stand out. What do you think, Janai? No, I mean, you guys are unfair because you guys took all the good answers. <laughs> trying to save you something, man. I didn't say everything. No, you know what? So one thing I'll say is, you know, you guys hit up some amazing points is people upload their actual resume on their LinkedIn profile, and I don't recommend that because it always comes up blurry. Every resume I've clicked, mm -hmm. it comes up always, and it's dude. not. And it's like, think about it. So if they're looking at your LinkedIn profile for a certain reason, they're on LinkedIn or they got a lead somehow, right? And if they're looking at it, so your LinkedIn profile should fulfill the need of the resume in that sense, right? They're on LinkedIn. They didn't come on LinkedIn to find your resume. They came on LinkedIn to see it. And it's like, that's why it's very important to be connected to people that you know in real life. Because oftentimes, like, I'm talking about not even from the job, when you're meeting someone, you're like, hey, how do you know this person? It just strengthens the, the bond. So if the recruiter is looking at you, it's like, hey, you know this person I used to work with. It's just another thing that can only help you. Unless you're a bad worker, then it can hurt you. <laughs> you really want to start really connecting with people and following up. And I, another thing that I would kind of say people should be careful of or just shy away from it's like hey don't make all your posts hey i'm looking for a job right no, it's definitely just, not. Yep. Just ha you, you just have to get so lucky right i knew someone it took him like seven months of <laughs> saying hey i'm looking for a job i'm looking for a job and then you're sort of known as a person who's screaming you, you don't want to be go that connect guy. with people and build no. relationships and then they'll look at your profile and it'll work things will work from there yeah, yeah I, t I totally agree with you on that if you're <clears throat> if you're out of a job don't be inactive, right? Oh, definitely. You, you still have to, I mean, get out there and post all the stuff about your expertise and and the things that you bring to the table. Don't go out there begging for work. Go out there and express all that you do. And by the way, another thing on those profiles, um, make sure that you have current and good recommendations. Um, don't don't go get fake stuff. Don't have your brother or your sister do it. Unless you work for them, yeah. <laughs> Unless you work for them. They're your boss, right? <laughs> yeah. In fact, you know, go get the people who you just previously worked for. And like Adam said, have them talk about how you changed the world of play. You know, yeah. that's that's going to be um, extremely helpful. But also in your posts, I, I love what you had to say about that, Adam, too. Talk about what you did and yeah. how you changed things in your posting because people look at the post too, right? Yeah, let's talk let's talk about thought leadership for a bit. And and now's an inmate, like if you're at not not just now when a lot of people are out of work, but let's talk about it, you know, in the general job search terms. Everybody's an expert in something, right? I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're you're clean right. carpets or if you're a NASA freaking astronaut, right? You're an expert right. in whatever you do. And you have to have a point of view. I was taught early on when I was working in digital strategy to always have a point of view. 
could be right, it could be wrong, but at least you're sticking to that and you're putting it out there. And as long as you could back that up with facts and proof, it's undisputable. So put it out there, have a voice, say something like, here's another technique also. There's a lot of current events out there. You could take an article, repost that article, but put like a couple of paragraphs of your point of view and right. ask a question out, engage, right? Like Janai and I talk about that all the time. How do you engage on LinkedIn? How do you start a conversation? And no better way than to post an article, put your thought on there, put your spin on it and get it out there and start a conversation. Right. And then yeah. you can also just straight up comment, right? Because search up hashtags, go comment, go on your feed. If you're an expert or you can add value in a certain area, just comment what, you know, how some actionable advice and you'd be surprised at how many people see your comments. Oh, yeah. I do that all the time. As I say, I do that all the time. I go up in the search bar and pick like a keyword that, that I want to focus on and, and put that keyword in and just start going on the feed and, and finding stuff that's interesting mm -hmm. that I have thoughts and, 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 and can add value to and, and that that in itself builds so much engagement uh you know i think the key overarching theme here is uh, we're talking about things that build relationships as opposed mm -hmm. to just transactionally viewing the platforms yeah absolutely yeah, another thing that i you know that i walk through with people too is that um you know how many people show up to interviews and they really don't know anything about the company yep and so they get stuck because they say, what do you know about us? <laughs> yeah. I mean, go get out there on LinkedIn. Every, every company that is posting a job has a company page. And in that company page lists all of their employees. Why wouldn't you go and try and connect with every single one of those employees and start up conversations with any of them that you can about what it's like to work at the place? What you know, how long have they been there? How do they enjoy it? What are they, what are they experience in leadership? Get any and every information. You know, you are in a sense interviewing that company just as much as they're going to interview you. And the more work you do up front with that, that's the beauty of LinkedIn. You have so much information there you, that you can get. And it's just that people don't go get it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great advice, too. And speaking from, you know, the in-house recruitment point of view, there is nothing, 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 nothing more of a turnoff to a hiring manager or recruiter when a candidate gets on the phone and they don't know crap about the company they're applying. That's a, that's lazy. That's lazy. That's a lack of effort. And it's also a little bit of entitlement, too, that I owe you something, that we owe you something, that right. we should be grateful for the fact that you apply for a job here. It's unbelievable. I mean, one of the first things that I do, and I'll pull back the curtain again here, when I get on the phone with candidates and I'm representing a company, you know, I ask them, I go, you know, hopefully you've had some time to check us out. You know, what are your thoughts? What's your take on us? You know, why do you think this is a good fit? Like all those leading questions to get them there. And if they have not, like, oh, I haven't had a chance yet. Dude, <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me that when people sit in the bathroom, they're not looking on their phones. They got plenty of time to look for stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's interesting. Uh, and, and I think that segues into talking a little bit about that outreach too, right? And, and looking into people and talking to people at the company, right? Um, I don't know about you guys, but like, especially on LinkedIn, like I get hit with like the random, uh, you know, hey, I'm looking for a job or hey, do you know somebody in this industry? Can you hook me up? Like, and that's the first contact as a direct message that I have with them. Oh, it looks like we lost Adam, but uh, we'll let him get back on here. But uh, yeah, you know, so like those direct messages, I think is their strategy to that. Janiyad, uh, you and I have had conversations about those. Uh, what What are your thoughts? What and just direct messaging people? Yeah. My so my strategy is honestly just comment, 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 add value and people will DM you um, because you'd be surprised at the amount of people who DM you and just really, and then the DMs lead to, Hey, connect with this person, connect with this person. Right. Um, yeah. You can rack up numbers, but the fact is the only things that ultimately matter in my opinion are the DMs and the phone conversations that you actually get. And especially as a job seeker, getting the right conversation with the right person is make or break. Even if they can't offer you a job, they can point you in the right direction. They can point you with the right person. They can say, you know what? On your resume, you know, I worked in this field. You're sort of, you know, when they talk to me, like you have this experience, but it's not on your resume. So that's, I think that your goal is to get on the DMs and on the phone, um, video call, whatever you can. That's really, that's the power of LinkedIn, right? Yeah. That you have these connections. You gotta, you gotta make them stronger. You know, I, our relationships, right? 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I got to say something, you know, that um, I, I've talked to a lot of people that are looking for jobs and I and I asked them to walk through the process, right? And the first thing they tell me was I try and connect with all these recruiters and HR people and they won't connect with me. And then when they do connect with them, they instantly start talking, making their pitch basically about, you know, do they have this job? Can I get this job? And, it, you know, if you are looking for a job, you need to consider yourself a salesperson. Okay. And what you are doing is you are going to be selling yourself to the buyer, which is going to be the person that is needing to fill a role in their company. Okay. And the same thing that holds true for businesses and everybody else, nobody likes getting a DM. That's just an instant sales pitch. Nobody. Okay. You, you just don't even do it on LinkedIn, but yet they, Every single day you will get those messages. If you are looking for a job and you're just pinging HR mm. people and recruiters and I need a job, can you get me a job? You know, worse. what do I do to get this job? You are done. They're, you're, they're not going to talk to you. They don't want to connect with you. Um, they don't have time for that. And Adam, you can speak to that. I don't think people have time for that. No, it has to be focused, right? I mean, it's all about relevance, right, guys? Like, it's relevance, right. too. I mean, listen, we want to help. It. Believe me, believe me, if I had, you know, a thousand hours in a day and I could help everybody, I would. But the problem is, with, and, I, and I am empathetic and I care, but when people reach out to me out of the blue and they haven't taken a moment to see what I specialize in, I mean, it's literally in my header. It says marketing recruiter. And I have someone coming at me from another industry. Now, now let me take a step back here. If you ask me the right way and you say, hey, Adam, I notice you're a marketing recruiter, but I'm in finance. Do you know a good mark a finance recruiter? That's cool. I'm fine with yeah. that, right? Because you're targeted in your question mm -hmm. and you're relevant. But if you come at me and you're in finance and say, hey, you have any finance jobs? I'm like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> no, you're wasting my time. And like, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to like be like, sound like a, you know, an unsympathetic ass here, but you're. I think we could all agree that time is our most valuable asset. Time is anybody's mm -hmm. most valuable asset. And if you waste someone's time, you're not going to get there. To, believe me, that's not the right approach, man. It turns people off immediately. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. No, I mean, so I, I, I don't know. I posted a video of my inbox before and it just gets, it's like, the thing is you have to think about the person, right? If someone has, they're getting likes, they're getting engagement on their posts you, and they have certain titles or whatever, you know that they're getting a lot of messages. So you're competing with other people's messages and I get messages hundreds a week. I need a job. I need this. I need resume help. I specifically had to put on my LinkedIn profile like I don't, you know, and it kind of makes me upset that I have to waste time, waste space in my about me saying I'm not an immigration specialist. <laughs> I don't do All that. the time, man. You know, and it's because you really have to understand. And the thing is, if someone tells me, hey, I know you're not an immigration specialist. Can you point me in the right direction? And then some people are like, why are you so blunt? I'm like, look, you didn't take the 10 you didn't, didn't take time to read my profile <laughs> it's like how can i take time and it's like look i've done resumes for free for people but it's people i've developed relationships with i'm not going to do resumes for free no. when i'm getting paid for it unless you i know you and i know your story it's just how things are right it's just yeah, you're busy you're people's time is valuable time is valuable and look it's like look, right. sometimes i just want to chill Right. I don't want to be working, you know, doing resumes for a living and doing it in my free time. And, you know, while you're driving, while I'm, <laughs> while I'm driving. So it's like this guy, Melty, you should see what he does when he drives, man. He's like, <laughs> so, but yeah, it's like those things you really want to set yourself apart and focus on building relationships instead of just spamming because spamming like spamming just doesn't work. It's so one of those things. Yeah, let's let's I want to get everyone's opinion. And Adam, I don't mean to steal your show here, but like, let's talk about yeah. when people because I, I had this today when when someone reached out to me, they're like a, a newish connection or kind of like a random connection, but someone in your network and they're asking you not just how are you doing, but they ask you, what do you do? Oh, <laughs> so I got I got this the other day and this dude has been hitting me up. I mean, he's in a different country, so I'll give a little bit of slack there just from like a, a language barrier perspective, but not really. Um, like, What do I do? What do you do? What do you do? Look at my freaking like. Yeah, no, I for me, like if you're asking me what I do, uh, you know, I I. I usually reciprocate the question and, it, and it's it's not to be rude. It's. It, 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 it's the normal course. If, if I were to meet you, you know, it, passing by it's, and I did, and I knew nothing about you and I didn't have any tools to, to go find out about you. I would ask that question. Right. 
Um, you know, so that's what I always do. I reciprocate the question in, in, in that for me, like that in itself will weed out the bots that are, that, that send that kind of right. stuff out in the first place. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is if you're trying to get on the phone with someone right away, it's like, I get, if I took every phone call, it's just, I wouldn't even be on the show. I'd be on two phone calls at the same time right now. <laughs> and what, like what people that say like, like I have five, five, it's never five minutes. It's yeah. the worst question. Five, five minutes, <laughs> five minutes turns into 50 minutes. I was, I was on the phone with somebody last week and I was like, literally, I, I had a few minutes in between putting my two kids to bed. I had that gap, right? I had yeah. that, that 45 minute gap. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to sit here and watch cartoons. My, my daughter's fine. Let me go take this call. And I'm like, bro, like. Yeah, you gotta be uh, enough. We're good. Like, what's your ask? What yeah. is your ask? And I yeah. think a lot of people have a hard time asking for something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, yeah. how do you how do you ask Janai, How do you ask? Like, how do you tell people to ask for something? Adam, like, what are your thoughts here, Bonte? Like, yeah, no, for me, like when it, when we get to I, if I've you know given thirty minutes for a call, if we get to twenty minutes and I haven't heard an ask yet, like. I will, I, I will stop people dead in their conversation and go, what are we mm -hmm. trying to accomplish here? It, it, because, you know, I'm like, I don't want to waste your time. I got other things I could be doing as well. You know, not to say that you're not important, but I need to know what we're trying to accomplish here so that we can move forward in that path. Yeah, no, I mean, yep. you guys said the great point. There's never just the five minutes. I had someone, you know, resume. I gave him some good, quick, actionable advice. And he was not looking to pay me. And then he's like, oh, can I get you on the phone for three to four minutes? I was like, dude, here are the things you need three to do. Three minutes? Google. Here's the things <laughs> you need to do. If you're looking for free, I said, look, spend like 30, 40 hours on your resume. Because even a resume Think for me, you. and I do it for a living, takes me three, four hours. Yeah. Right? If you don't want to pay, put in the time. That's, you know, it's always a trade-off. Yeah. Right? And that's why I tell people that, look, I just don't have time to do that much. And then the other thing about reading the profile so once you put podcast host, people always ask, hey, can I be a guest in your podcast? Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, man. So my podcast is called the No Degree Podcast. I don't want people who have PhDs who have degrees. It's pretty apparent. <laughs> say, hey. and you had me on. Things. You're on the live show, not the podcast. Fair enough. And you know what? And it's like, come on, at least understand the message, right? My podcast is just not everyone on LinkedIn who sends me a message who oh. has a story, right? It's like <laughs> they tell me and, you know, some of them say, oh, but I don't use my degree. And I'm like, you know what? I own wrongdegree.com, too. Maybe I'll start the Wrong Degree podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. it. Ed. But, yeah, it's the second show, man. You got to have you yeah, got. I mean, that's interesting, too. I mean, the, the ask is interesting and it, and it really comes down to relevance. And I don't think it's wrong for people to ask. Right. And like everyone wants a shot. Everybody yep. wants a shot, but you know, when we get approached by guests for the show too, first thing I ask them is why do you think this show would be good for you? Yeah. I, I I'm gentle with that question, right? I don't say, why do you, you know, why do you think, you know, you should be on the show, right? Why do you think this show should be good for you? Why does it make sense? Why does my show make sense for you to be on it? Right. Cause I get pitched by PR people. I get pitched by mm -hmm. people that I don't think they've even listened or checked out the site. They just see podcast hosts and they're, that's what these yeah. people, these PR people, get paid for a placement there's a lot yeah. of p's there they yeah. get paid for each each show yeah no i, I think that's interesting uh and going into reading right uh we've all looked at some point in our careers at a lot of resumes uh you know let, let's shift gears and let's start talking a, a little bit about the resume space because i think there's huge opportunity there uh especially with how you know, the soft, it's driven a lot with software now, uh, you know, and, and that review process is significantly different than what it used to be even 15 years ago. Um, you know, and so what are, what are those kind of good, uh, good vibes? What are those things you should be doing on your resume? I mean, I'll kind of go, please correct me if I'm wrong. So a <laughs> lot of companies, especially large companies use something called an ATS system. There's an applicant tracking system, and it's typically an automated system that scans your resume. So apparently there are statistics that 75% of resumes get eliminated automatically before it ever goes to a human. And you have to think about it. If you get a 1,000 resumes, you can't look at all 1,000. And then the num I see the number one reason people get eliminated is formatting, purely formatting. That if you know they put these pictures, they put all these things, and they don't try to make it look pretty. Yeah. They don't seem to understand that a resume is a document that someone's looking at at between their 230 and their 245 and they have a huge pile and they got to go through it quickly and it's something that they really don't want to do 
So you have to design it. So in seven to 15 seconds, you can make a good first impression. And then, then they're looking at it for maybe another 15 seconds to a minute. Pretty much very few people actually ever read the full resume. So that's yeah. why it's important mm-hmm. that less is more. I see some people like 20, 30 bullet points. It's like, Too much. come on, nobody needs to know, oh, you have a weekly meeting at 9 o'clock that you do well on and a weekly meeting at 10 o'clock that you do well on. It's like <laughs> hit the highlights and hit the results. Right? The so- rest you can talk about that in an interview. So just to just to jump in here, I mean, I I literally, you know, at, at a bunch of my clients, I am the one sitting on the other side of the applicant system, and and let's just be very clear here: not every company, not even the majority of companies, use ATS systems here because there is a human on the other side yeah. of it, right? Now there's filtering mechanisms. So let's say I have a job open that I'm reviewing for one of my clients here, and I'm on the other side, and I'm the, the lead recruiter there. I I can filter. Right. I yeah. can filter by keywords. That's one thing that I could do. So that's mm-hmm. why keywords are important. I do not have a system that filters out people before I look at them. That does not happen at any of the companies that I've worked at. Yes. That's not to say that any of the big boys have that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I cannot say yes or no to that, but I n- personally have never seen it. I've always been a human on the other side filtering it. What's going to get you through again. We talk about it all the time at the high mm-hmm. level. It's relevance, right? It's yes. relevant experience. And it's tough because the argument it always is, hey, I have at least 50, 60% of the skills here. Let me at least get that conversation in and talk to you about those soft skills, those transferable skills and everything. But a lot of times we want somebody who is immediately relevant for that position. And we don't have the luxury to, to make it like a, you know, an open for everyone kind of thing. So you have to be relevant. Yeah. I, you know, I totally agree with that. And I, you know, <clears throat> with the, um, to, to get back to what you were saying about keywords and then with LinkedIn, because if you go to the um, the company pages where they're posting these jobs, they give you all the keywords that you need right there on the side. Okay, they 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 show you everything that needs to be in your resume, so that you can be immediately relevant, and they tell you exactly how to be relevant. If you take the time to read through it, <clears throat> look at what the and, and I understand, and I love your guys' opinions on this too that. All companies for all positions, in some sense, are just ask for the world, right? We we, we want Superman. Right. They want six jobs in one, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And if we can find that, that's who we want. But we understand that that's probably not out there. But here's all the things. Here's our wish list. So you have to go and identify all the things within the wish list that, that represent you and that you are to try and present that relevance back to um, the employer, correct? Yeah, I mean, a lot. I see a lot of people, and I tell people, if you write and sell yourself properly, the keywords will naturally appear. Great. Yep. Right? If that's what, so what I find a lot of resumes, right? So other than formatting, is they'll say, "Hey, I trained people in this," and I'll ask, "How many people did you train? How long was this? Tra- is this like a two-hour seminar, or is this like a six-week onboarding program?" So you want to find the right balance of having enough detail, but not too much, right? Then you don't want to go into, hey, there are 32 p- page documents and this and that. You kind of want to have the right point that they're like, because you want to answer the question like, hey, this person has the experience. I need to know if they're a good fit. Not like, does this person have the good experience? They're not going to call you to figure out if you have the right experience. They're going to call you if you have the right experience. And then they're trying to figure out you as a whole person. So you want right. to find that right balance of detail that. You're giving enough information, but not too much. And don't go, I don't know. I personally think like some people go for paragraphs and stuff. It's like you got to make it so it's easily digestible. I yeah. see people go for huge paragraphs and this and that. It's like have bullet points, be yep. direct. Always like, bullet like, points. Always. always bullet points. Think about the end user. Think about who's reading it, yeah. like consumption, mm-hmm. readability. Yeah. So I, I have a question for you guys both yeah. too. So um, <clears throat> I don't come from the recruiting side. So as a recruiter or an HR person, Let's, you know, you get you, your work, your way down through the thousand down to a hundred. Now you've got the top, let's say 10, 20. Do you always go out and look at, look at their LinkedIn profiles? Always. Mm-hmm. That's me I mean, personally. I will always, always look at your LinkedIn profile. I want to see, I'll tell you the reason why, man. I want to see who you're connected to so I can back channel and find out about you. Yeah. I mean, not, not in a malicious way, not in a malicious way, but it's real, man. And that's why reputation and <laughs> what you do and burning bridges and all that kind of stuff is so important, right? Like being mindful about relationships and what your reputation is, right? Yep. And everyone yep. knows somebody. So I'm not a recruiter either, but it's like, why not? Why honorary. I give you an honorary uh, hat. You get a hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just one of those things. Why would you not? Right. Because yeah. 
job seekers, you're competing with other job seekers. And if you have a better LinkedIn profile than your competition, that's plus one, plus two. You yep. never know because on a LinkedIn profile, Agree. people don't realize that compared to a resume, it's a rolling web page. That if they're right. on your LinkedIn profile, it's they're typically expressing a little more interest in the resume where they're like looking at 100. They don't. So now they're looking at you. Now you can put other things that are that you can't put on your resume because it's going to go too long. But you can put other things, other other your interest. The mutual connections is a big part. You can put other things that you've done, other things that you're involved in. They can kind of see your activity. They can see an article. So it's like, again, mm -hmm. very few job seekers are actually doing this. Very few job seekers actually take yeah. it seriously. So if you're one of the few, why wouldn't you? And I would also add to that, that if I were a recruiter or an HR person, I would also go click on your all activity and I would quickly scan through all the comments and stuff that you yeah. make because you can really tell what yeah. somebody's character and how they're going to be based on the comments <laughs> and stuff that you're posting out on other people's stuff. Yeah. And if you're out there being yeah. a hater and bashing on other people, you can pretty much guarantee that that's what you're going to, what you're going to bring into the company too. So, you know, you got to be really careful about, um, what you're commenting on, how you're commenting on it, and how you're presenting your, yourself, not only in your own post, but how you're engaging other people. Yeah. Just yeah. add value, be a good person, and you know, people will be like, okay, cool. I don't mind having a person like this. I'd, I'd like to have a person. Just remember, it lasts forever. What you write on social lasts forever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Be mindful. <laughs> yeah. There are yeah. some people who I've seen, they've deleted their comments and deleted the post. I still don't forget. Right. Yeah. Still in here. Exactly. You know, Adam, you, you pointed out on the podcast is last week or the week before uh, we were talking about recruiting a little bit and and uh, mentioned the Google search thing. And, uh, you know, like I, when I was a hiring manager, when I got down to like my my top five, top ten, like, heck, yeah, I went out and Google search people. It doesn't it, doesn't take long. It doesn't take you'd be surprised. Right. And listen, the thing is, too, man, like, listen, I'm not looking at your Instagram or your Facebook, you know, like unless you're a grand wizard of the kkk right like on your on your linkedin page right like it's fine like people have summer photos in bathing suits people drink yeah. right like but but yeah like on the professional sense too if i google you and you're and you you've, you're a mass murderer right <laughs> like <stuff comes up. laughs> that's why you got, a lot of people have the same names you got to be careful with that man you got to be yep. careful and that's why it's more important than ever to have the linkedin profile because yes. if they google yep. you and your linkedin profile comes up that's important yep. So you want to that's another reason that you want to control your presence and have something good show up because oftentimes the LinkedIn profile is one of the first things that shows up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. LinkedIn does a great job of being a, a number one source. Facebook uh, is, is a number two source. Um, you know, and Adam, you, you point out, you know, the, the Internet lives forever. Right. Um, you know, but it's it's interesting because like. I see so many people, even on Facebook, like I'm not going to judge you for, for having photos, partying with your buddies and things like that. Right. But but if you start posting like a bunch of inappropriate like hater memes all over your, your mm -hmm. Facebook profile, like that's a big red flag in my mind. You know, so. you know what? It's there's a reason is because a lot of people who post those hater memes, they're like jerks. It's not like, hey, I posted this one, you know, it's, you know, people say, hey, I posted this one meme and it's ruined your life. It's like you look at their things and this is like they're jerks. So it's like, yeah, yeah. they're literally just jerks all the time. Yeah, they're just yeah. jerks all the time that you, you, would, you don't want that person around the office who just knowing everyone and spouting nonsense. Right. You don't yep. want that. Yep. I think all the platforms, I honestly, I think all the platforms combined create social media right and you're putting out all kinds of media about yourself and if somebody wants to look into who you are it you, we'll find it right yep. linkedin i think it's almost a disservice to call linkedin social media linkedin is social networking and if you um if you treat linkedin like a live network event like if you walked into the room and you walked up to say somebody and have a conversation with somebody, you're going to approach that conversation in a very specific way. Um, it's going to be more about the other person, right? You're going, to, you're going to be asking questions about the other person, trying to get to know the other person. You're not going to immediately pitch them and say, hey, do you have a job? Can I get a job with you? You know, that's not going to happen. Uh, and you're going to be careful about how you engage and interact with people because you're standing face to face with them. So, 
just because you're behind a computer or you're behind a phone app doesn't mean that you should act any differently um, than how you would at a live networking group, right? And Monty, yeah, up we talk about that too, right? What's authenticity, right? Mm -hmm. Try to be yeah. who you are in front of the camera, outside the camera in real life. Yeah, exactly. Monty, up, you know, LinkedIn is just virtual networking on steroids. And so what look at people who do well in real life in networking. It's like people who add value, people who follow up, people who are just authentic people. And right. if you're that, you'll do well on LinkedIn. And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of my great, my best connections are people I've been connected to since I was at like 2,000 followers. You don't need a crazy amount to build a strong network. If you have 10 to 20 people that you regularly engage with, add value to, that's more than enough to, and that's more than what most people have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it, it wholeheartedly is. Uh, I, one thing I absolutely love about the, the LinkedIn community is it, it politely polices itself like it, it's yeah. it's totally different than any of the other social networks in that in that respect because um you know all the all the political banter all the you know strong the, the strong emotional media stuff like when when people post that stuff it just it just dies like yeah. people don't react to it on the platform nearly as much and and so like absolutely love you know, yeah. love that aspect of it. it. It's it's much like that live network. I mean, there are some about. dark corners on LinkedIn. If you there is. <laughs> but you know, it's funny that it's all the same people together. Yep. It's kind of, it yeah. just makes you realize, okay, I'm not gonna connect with you. Nope. I'm not gonna, right? And it's it's just yep. one of those things. You just gotta be careful what you post. That don't be a jerk, right? What, yeah. What, yeah. You gotta be. You gotta be mindful, gotta right? Be mindful. And and it's a, it's a tough balancing act too. I mean, right now a lot of us have some pent up anger and. Yeah frustration and stress i mean i'll be honest man like i there's times when i i i get hey, froze, get right? on yeah, froze, right? for a second yeah <laughs> two seconds i guess yep right yeah, some of their activity right okay, right right Adam's before on. you started right before you started Here, right. where's that there you go Here, there we go. <laughs> yeah man I, you know i was I, you know i was i was gonna say right i was gonna say right it's tough right now because a lot of us have stress, frustration, things that are pent up, you know, we're kind of stuck there. So it's easy for us to be keyboard warriors, right? It's easy for us, you yeah. know, as, as Monty said, to sit here behind the cameras and kind of say things. And I'll be honest, man, I, I've been guilty of it too recently, but I, I don't go after the week. I go after the people that are preying on the week. You know, I go after mm -hmm. people that I see on LinkedIn, taking advantage of people, people that are spreading just piss poor advice, but it not just bad advice, advice with the bad intentions behind it. There's a difference there. there right? If your intention is right to monetize in a bad way, if your intention is to give exactly. bad advice for people to do things in the wrong way, I'm going to call your bullshit, man. I'm going to call it all day long because I'm in a position to do that. I'm in a position of, and listen, I'll say I'm in a position of expertise on this platform to say that's not right. You're giving bad information. You're leading people down, down, down the wrong road. Mm -hmm. And that's that, man. I don't get into politics. I don't get into personal. I don't get into religion. I won't touch that. That's not the type of person I am. But I am the type of person that will defend the wrong. And I'm yeah. the type of person that's always got Adam's back. So when he's there, I'm always commenting and, <laughs> and laughing. <laughs> I completely you, agree. You, you I, love when I do that shit, man. I, I, I completely agree with you, Adam, 100%. I mean, if, if especially if you're presenting yourself as a quote-unquote expert, you know, on the platform and – and trying to monetize that in a disingenuous way, get off. Just get off of it. Because call you out all day long. Everybody is there to um, do something, right? You're either there to find a job, or you're there to um, build a business, or you're there to mm -hmm. just get information and engage with people and better yourself. Nobody needs somebody that's going to that's going yeah. to uh, self uh gratify and disingenuously get people um just to build up their own metrics and monetize their own stuff that they can get for free anywhere exactly yeah. i mean i've seen people in one month all of a sudden they say hey i'm linkedin's number one guru i'm this one <laughs> I'm, I'm this we had this for it's we like, had this conversation bro, the other day. Yeah, yeah you can't. bro. I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had drives longer than you've been on LinkedIn. I love, <laughs> I love the. Uh, I, I was about I to say the, something really inappropriate, but I didn't, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, no like, I, I absolutely love the self-proclaimed guru and influencer. They're like, I'm a LinkedIn influencer, and you go to their profile, and they have like 400 connections. 
Like, it's not even that, man. It's how long they've yeah. been on the platform for, right? Like, if you've been yeah. on the platform for less than, you know, a couple of years, man, you have not seen the progression. You have not seen it. I mean, on the flip side of that, too, listen, platforms change every single day. Janai and I talk about this all the time. It's an yeah. evolution as a technology. So if you're kind of in tune with that and the pulse is a level of expertise there for sure, but don't claim to be an authority or an influencer. Like, yeah. please don't. Especially, no. you see it all the time. It's like people use, it's like, I call it the LinkedIn pyramid scheme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's mine. You, you stole that from for, me. You pay for an overpriced LinkedIn coach. They tell you some things that can fluff up your numbers and can get up there quick. And then you become a LinkedIn coach to sell that right. advice. <laughs> right. No one's adding value and no one truly knows. Like what nope. I tell people is if someone says they're good at social media and they're good at some, look at their profiles, look at their stuff, look at their presence on other platforms, right? If you can't claim to be a social media expert, do well yep. on one platform and do terrible on another. That just means you figured out how to game one platform and not exactly. the other, right? You got to well, kind of look at their whole holistic package. What, what what always cracks me up about that is, is that uh, you know they, they claim to be an expert with uh, with other people's information, and <laughs> yeah. you know, and then uh, and then they know how to apply it to their to their specific circumstances. But you know, it, it's when you bring the whole package together of you know understanding how to apply it to a job seeker versus somebody that's trying to use it for business versus somebody that's trying to just genuinely connect and learn things like there there's there's three very different approaches there and and yeah. if you can apply it to your circumstances but you can't apply it to all the other circumstances that are out there it's not a system and yeah. you shouldn't be selling it a lot that's of not, that's experts. not a system yeah a lot of people <laughs> are experts at promoting themselves and there are a lot of factors when it comes to promoting yourself yep Right. Compared to promoting someone else, it's right. like it's it's different. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's a, I think it's a delicate I think I think a lot of people and let's be fair here. I think I think there's a delicate line between self-promotion because I think it's OK. I think all of us like if we're using LinkedIn, we're promoting ourselves to a certain extent. Right. There's a delicate balance between self-promoting and humble bragging. There's a fine yeah. line. And I think some people either don't know how to do it the right way or they don't give a crap and they go full tilt on the humble bragging and it shows and it resonates and people notice. And especially now in this current time when people are being tone deaf, if you're trying to sell, sell, sell and jam shit down people's throats right now, you're yeah. not taking the right approach. Absolutely not. Yeah. So my joke is that there's 675 million people on LinkedIn and 674 million of them are LinkedIn experts. <laughs> <laughs> Because titles are self-proclaimed, right? You write your own title. It's not like you're right, I mean, like you're speaker, right? Amazon bestseller, LinkedIn guru, yeah, and, king of the universe. And if, <laughs> and if you literally put influencer on your title, it's guaranteed that you are not. Or a hat. Because yeah, because those titles are as given. Those aren't those aren't proclaimed, right? I mean, yep. they're given by other people. I yep. do have a question for you guys, and I'd love your opinions on this because I hear this a lot from people. Um, what's your thoughts about um, people that are getting older age discrimination <clears throat> in, in job seeking and stuff? Because I have a lot of guys and, and ladies that, you know, pushing 40, 45 into their 50s and they work their way up to middle management and um, they're a primary target, right, to get let go because they've reached a salary yeah. position that's high. They can get rid of that salary, bring in the next person for a lot less salary that to do the same thing and more. Um, and now all of a sudden they're found, they found themselves <coughs> looking for a job. They have no idea how to do it. They can't get any traction in any way, shape or form. And the you know, the general feeling is, well, it's because I'm old. Nobody wants to talk to me. They only want to bring in young people that they can pay squat and yeah. train them up to do what I did. So what's your guys' thoughts on that? I'll let Adam correct me if I'm saying anything wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> what I found is if you sell yourself properly and if you do things properly. And another thing I've seen a lot of pe older people ignore is they they don't utilize their network that nope. someone who's 40, 50 has a better network. So they've either not built it and ignored it. And now they want to reach out mm -hmm. and have a job. And the other thing is, it's like you could tell their age just on their resume in terms of 
when they, they graduated college, how many like jobs terrible. they have. It's like the formatting <laughs> is just so hard to read. It's, it's like a lot of points. It's like they they don't even know how to use a Word document. A lot of times, a lot of people who say they struggled, because think about it, it's not like, hey, once you turn 50, you're forced to retire. There are plenty of 50 to 70 year olds who are working and they find jobs. The ones that are not finding jobs are not who haven't tapped into their network. Because I find a lot of people, they're not good at their resume, but they can get jobs through their network. So these are people Correct. who haven't really utilize their network and they haven't really their resume is not up to par it doesn't really reflect their experience it kind of looks like someone wrote it in high school yeah i mean age discrimination is real and you know i'm speaking very specifically about the advertising and marketing industry which is notorious for age discrimination yeah, yeah. and it's really tough it's really tough and i'm going to be careful here not to say anything you know too out of line here um but it's a, it really is, a, you know, it's from a relevancy standpoint, you know, from a technology, from a pop culture, right? It's trends. And, and that's something that there is a bias there across the industry. And it's really, really tough. And it's also an industry that kind of, you know, people kind of feather out at a certain age because you're talking about a, a, a pyramid, right? There's obviously more junior jobs at the bottom. And as you go to the top and the higher seniority, there's less opportunities. Exactly. I mean, you have to think about other industries where there are more opportunities, you know, for folks that are, that are older. And I guess uh, it's, a, it's a tough one, man. I, re I really, no, I, agree. I there, don't like to go some, too deep into but, that. You no, know, the point is that it exists. You got to make sure that you do the things to minimize it, right? That you sell yourself, that you yep. know, the new technologies that mm -hmm. there are like some old people. You got to stay well a point. On TikTok. Right, huh? Yeah, look at Joe Gill. Joe Gill's doing great on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, you gotta stay relevant. Well, I go, yeah. I go back to what you were saying about relevancy, right? Yeah. You, you, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still be relevant. And the way you stay relevant is to keep up with the technologies and keep up with your networks and stuff, just like what you guys were both saying there. You know, you have to have, um, you have to have. Uh, a plan and a strategy to stay in front of people. Yeah, and, they, and I think that's what LinkedIn's. I think that's what LinkedIn's for. And I think there's another. Yep. And Janai, I don't know if you and I have had this sidebar here um, about the the opportunity to coach, to do branding to folks that are, you know, maybe not as yeah active on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Right. And in a way that's relevant and not with the hacks, but about providing value, optimizing your profile, thought leadership how to network, how to reach out. Like yeah. Monty, like what is your, you know, your, your coaching base look like from a demographic perspective? It's kind of all over the board. Um, I, <clears throat> you know, I've had, it's mostly, um, well, I've had, you know, 30 somethings all the way up to um, hmm. the oldest guy was in his probably in sixties. So, um, you know, and, and, and industry wise, too, it's all over the board too, you know, because there's different strategies for different things on LinkedIn. It all depends on what you're trying to accomplish, right? And and so <clears throat> going back to, you know, you're either trying to find a job or you're trying to build a business in some way, shape or, or form. Sell yeah. Something, yep. yeah. So I mean, those <clears throat> those strategies can be somewhat common, but they're very detail oriented by the person and what who you are and what you are actually trying to achieve. And and those have to be tailored um, independently, you know, you can't, there is no one size fits all LinkedIn strategy. Yeah. yeah. And then also oh. to add to that, I would say you shouldn't have more than 10 to 12 years of experience on your resume before that. It's like, you know, put Who the cares? titles and stuff, but don't put that you, Hey, you graduated college in 1977. Just put that you graduated college. Cause they're not hiring you for stuff you did 20 years ago. They're yeah. it's really like the five to 10 years and they're going crazy 20 bullet points for a job you did in two, you know, yeah. 1995 is just not relevant today. A, ge yeah. a general a general rule of thumb that I like to see on a resume. I mean, I I'll be honest, I I really do kind of go on the side of a two page, you know, a front and back resume because yeah. you have to think about the end user there and the readability. So yeah. what I like to say is, listen, if you've been in the market, if you've been working for a long time, do your top maybe we'll call it five most recent jobs. Let's say they're average of yeah. one to three, five years each, right? You have those, you have the jobs there, and then at the end you go additional experience, and then it's just where you work, your title, and the date range, and we could see that there. That's the way to handle it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just keep it simple. Like, there are very few instances where I'd ever even recommend a three page, and I haven't come across it. It's Unless you're a PhD, specific. right? And you have doctorates, yeah. and you have doc, yeah. and you have, you've written dissertations, and you have, or if you're like uh, producing yeah. something like an actor, or if you're yeah. a commercial, uh, uh, you know, in advertising, if you're a creative director and you have awards, right? And you're listing some of your awards, yeah, that's a different story. Yeah. Yep. 
How how important? I know we don't have much time left, but how important do you guys feel like recommendations are? <coughs> they help on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah, I think if they're genuine, that they help, and it's look, it's better than not having any. Let's let's talk about that for a second because I've seen some pretty yeah. bad advice on LinkedIn that says people should literally get recommendations for everybody. And I actually mm -hmm. received a recommendation from somebody that I just connected with. They wrote me a recommendation. Oh and it was about my it wasn't like <laughs> if they wrote me a recommendation and it was about my podcast or something, I was a great host or the great guest. That's one thing. Sure. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. But they wrote it about a job like my digital marketing expertise. I'm like, are you doing that for me to get back to you on that? But the thing about recommendations is I will look at a candidate's recommendations, I will see who they're from. The relevance where you work there and it, and it goes back to relevance man and don't be fishing for recommendations yes get ask for recommendations but don't be fishing for just random records man yeah yeah make sure it makes sense like a former manager former colleagues and that's someone you actually worked with not your mailman yeah. so i have an idea i have an idea for you guys and it'll be maybe tip of the world who knows tip of the century <laughs> so you know how they have how linkedin has created this new feature section right yeah there used to be all these tiny little icons in your about now there's a big big bold feature section do a video recording of yourself that talks about what you're interested in what you'd like to accomplish in your career what you um bring to the table and put that video first in your feature section would that be helpful? Yeah, yeah. If you're a recruiter, I think it's a great spot for you. you have the you have the, yeah. you have the real estate. Uh, it's a I billboard. Put, I mean, it literally is a billboard. I want to put a caveat on that because I think there's uh, uh, there's a lot of poor video content out there. Uh, 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 you know, uh, really? you should not be walking. You should not be walking around the parking lot of your gym uh, recording this video. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Sit down in front of your computer, sit down in front of a webcam. Sit, you know, even if you're doing it off your phone, be sitting somewhere that has a nice background, that has good acoustics, that's quiet, that doesn't have a whole lot of interruption and make it a a, a bit of a polished video. Like because right? I, I, I think if you just you know throw that 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 parking lot video out there that so many people do, like that's kind of a bad look if you're trying to feature yourself. Yeah, yeah put a little yeah, thought yeah. into it. So cool. Well, I definitely appreciate everybody's time today. We're going to kind of start to wrap up here. Uh, we will go around. What's that, that one piece of advice everybody should take away from today? So we'll, we'll start with Adam. Oh man, one piece of advice. I think it comes down to the word relevancy, right? If you want to stand out in your job search, be relevant right now, the market is flooded and you need to stand out. The way to stand out is to be relevant and follow Janaya and Monty's tips here on how to do that. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to say, just listen to Adam. <laughs> my wife would not agree <laughs> uh, just invest time invest time i think a lot of job seekers are not investing the proper amount of time because look you either got to invest time or money one of those two things yep. there's some job seekers that are investing thousands into mentorship and all that so it's like if you want to compete with them you got to put in the time there's really no trade-off yep. and it's simple as that my number one tip is engage don't sit on the sidelines. Don't just sit and look and pour through endless, you know, opportunities. Go engage the opportunity, seek the opportunity out and engage people in the right way and the opportunity will find you. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate it, guys. I will make sure we get in the show notes uh, where you can find these guys, where you can connect with these guys. Uh, reach out. They are a great resource, great uh, fountain of knowledge uh, for you know, recruiting, LinkedIn, social media, uh, and really getting you forward. Obviously, like they said, don't comment on me and go, hey, can, can you help me get a job, right? <laughs> that, that's not what it's about. But, uh, you know, go find these guys, find their content. They put out tons of great stuff about uh, how to help you in the market, how to help you on LinkedIn, how to help you in, in social media. So, uh, and, and if you're up late night, hit Janiyad's uh, LinkedIn Insomnia up. It's it's a great time. Podcast as well. I know you got a lot of stuff going on there. Monty, what other projects you got going on? People can find you at. Just hit me up on LinkedIn. I got all stuff, all kinds of stuff, all day, every day. And um, and if you're interested in learning more about the master class, message me. Happy to talk about it. Awesome. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful afternoon uh, to all those job hunters. Thank you. Uh, we understand it's hard out there, but hopefully this gives you some uh, some direction and some help to get going forward. Have a great afternoon.
Thanks, Adam. Great to see you guys. Thanks, guys. Take care, guys. Be good. I'll get you your mics back one day.